Hi everyone, this is Jay Johnson with DailyTexture.com. Today I'm introducing a new set called Creamy Dreamy Scenes. This is a background set for you to input your favorite subjects. I'm also going to do a tutorial on the image at the end of this, but first I want to introduce you to the collection and show you what we have. <clears throat> uh, this is the cover photo and this shows um, a range of all of the scenes that are included. We have some far away ones, we have some close up ones, we have a lot of pathways, just a lot of gorgeous creamy places to put your favorite subject. And I've included three bonus backgrounds. The bonus backgrounds have a little bit more painterly feel to them. They're just a few images that I played with with doing some digital painting on and I thought they would be great backgrounds. They're not really creamy, they're more painterly, but I thought you guys would enjoy them. So I'm putting them in the package for you. And now I'm going to take you through the collection of scenes. I have two like this in the collection. These are for a close-up to put your subject right here like a headshot, body, you know, top half of the body shot. Just two beautiful floral images. This is wisteria. And this is pink roses with a nice soft creamy background that fades away to keep the focus on your subject. This is a pathway, autumn pathway, and this is great for a full body subject or um, a, um, say for instance an action shot with somebody walking away or running or running towards you. There's a lot of different things you can do with this one. Now this is a more close-up autumn scene where you could put your subject right here. Uh, once again, full body shot. You could also use this as a background for a headshot if you wanted to. And here is another pathway with a little bit more muted colors. Some gorgeous light in the background on this one. Here's one in green tones for your summer or spring subjects. Here is a pathway with a little bit of water in it, which can be kind of fun to put your subject in there. This is a very close up of a pathway for perhaps a smaller subject, such as a small dog or a cat or a baby or a, maybe even a couple sitting down. This is a field background for a full body subject. Another field background for a full body subject. Another one that this one's a little bit closer up where you can put your subject up close and there's some little horses in the background here that are faded in real nice. Here's another field. Here's some railroad tracks. Now I'm not one who's photograph. Well, first of all, I don't photograph people and um, I know a lot of people do photograph people on the railroad tracks which I don't think is the smartest thing. I mean, there are railroad tracks that are no longer in use and those are probably okay. But I know there's a lot of controversy out there about railroad tracks, but people like those images. So this gives you an opportunity to place your subject on the railroad tracks if you want that kind of image without actually having to go to a railroad track and actually get on the tracks. And here is another field. Got a very nice glow in this field. This is another close-up um, image here where you can put a, a full body subject here, like a small dog, a duck, a cat, probably many other kinds of animals, even people, child. You can have a full body subject standing up for a small child or sitting down for larger or or a family backdrop if you wanted to put some people in there that were maybe sitting down. Here's another pathway with autumn tones. And another one with some gorgeous tones in this one in light. And this is a horizontal pathway. And another horizontal one. This one has 
kind of a mix of autumn and summer tones. This is what we're having here right now. We The trees haven't all turned colors yet, but there's a lot of leaves on the ground. And here's a winter one, um, also horizontal for your winter subjects. And then here is a close-up of the painterly winter background and the um, dramatic moon background and the soft mountain background. So those are the three bonus images. Now I can tell, I can assure you I'm going to put an eagle in this one. I haven't done it yet, but that's the plan. Now th these are some examples that I've done. This is an uh, elephant in the field. And this is my little niece, Izzy. And I placed her with those pretty pink roses because she had on a pretty pink outfit there. And I just thought it went well with her. And here's Izzy again. This is a walking away action shot. And I thought she would look nice walking down that autumn pathway. And I, she had on pink again. I actually toned down the hue of the pink and made it a little bit more orangey and peachy to go with the autumn scene. And this is a example of a snow leopard with that uh, one of the bonus backgrounds. And the snow flakes are overlays there in the Winter Collection 1 that's available on DailyTexture.com. Um, I You could do it with or without snow. I thought it would look nice with some snow, so I went and grabbed the overlays for this example here. But he looks beautiful with that painted winter background. So that's just a short introduction to the scene. And if you'll hang on just a second, I'll open up my software and we'll get ready to do a tutorial. Okay, I'm back again and we're going to do a tutorial with the Creamy Dreamy Scenes collection. I'm going to use this little guy right here that I photographed um, last year. I thought he would be perfect for a portrait in one of these scenes. So I have his image open. I'm going to open up Topaz Photo FX Lab, which is my program of choice. I'm in Paint Shop Pro, but I always go to Topaz from there. Paint Shop Pro is my host program. But I love Photo FX Lab because I can access all of the plugins through here, including uh, Topaz Impression up here. So I have this little Rottweiler puppy, and I'm going to put him into a background. First, I'm going to pick a background from the collection. I'm, since he's a vertical picture, I'm going to go with a vertical background. So I'll just pull out one of these, and I'm going to move him on top because I need to mask away all of his original background here so I can place him in the scene. So we're going to go to the masking tab. Um, I have my hardness set all the way down so I'll have a very soft brush and edge aware is off but you can turn it on with an image like this because there's such a contrast difference between him and the background. I could actually go like this around the edge and it would pick up on those edges. but I, I just like to, most of the time I don't use that. I just like to use a soft brush and get as close as I can. And I'll actually go over the fur and right into the subject. That brings the background tones and a little bit of the background into the edges of the subject. And I'm just quickly masking away. I will refine things as I go along. Get rid of that leash. As I get closer to him, I'll reduce the brush size, but right now I'm just trying to get the majority of the background out of there. Now I'm going to reduce the brush size a little bit and go in a little closer. Try to stay around all these little hairs that are poking out. I'm going to go over those with a lower opacity brush and actually bring the background right into his fur a little bit. I got rid of a little too much of his leg there, so we'll bring that back and try that again. Maybe go a little bit smaller with the brush. Get in here around his feet and his toes.
under him. Get around these feet and toes. And up around this side. Trying to make sure I get all of that background out of there that was in his original photo. And around his ear. And then we're going to go with a smaller brush, maybe a two. If I can get it to land on there, and go up in here. Get a little tighter around this ear. Get in between some of these little hairs just a little bit. Not too much. Because I'm going to go over this with a different um, opacity. Okay, now I'm going to lower the flow, which is like opacity. I'm going to raise the brush size up. And I'm actually going to brush right along the edges of him to bring some of that background right into him. It kind of softens things up around those edges. And I can always bring it back if I take away too much. I like a nice soft transition. I don't like sharp edges. Go over speed a little. I can give him a haircut if I wanted to. That's the beauty of masking. Okay, he's looking pretty good, obviously. He's too big. But one other thing I noticed is his color tones. I really want to use one of these autumn scenes with him. <laughs> but his color tones are a bit blue. So I'm going to reduce his saturation just a little bit. Actually, no, I'm not yet. First, I'm going to resize him and get him where I want him. And as you can see, when I resize him, you can see some masking that I missed here on the very edges. So we're going to go around those edges and make sure I get all of that out of there. And get in a little tighter around that ear on both sides because, and around the head because I see a little white right there and bring some of these hairs back right here. All right. Now I'm going to make him fit. So he's a small dog. He's a small puppy and this is a large area pathway. And I have a little leeway on how big I can make him. Just try to find something that works well. I kind of like that. Maybe even that. That's a little bigger, but he, um, if I have him down close enough here in the front, that would work. If I put him farther back, I would need him to be smaller. I'm going to keep him right there. Now at this point, I'm going to go back to the masking tab. And I'm actually going to mask away maybe at half opacity, just around the toes a little bit and bring, I'm just tapping, bring some of these leaves up over his feet because he would be setting down in the pathway. So he would be set, his toes would be in the leaves on this particular background. like this, maybe even a little more. That's pretty good. Let me get a little smaller brush and get around here in this back foot. 
on both sides. Bring those leaves up over the back foot. Trim him up a little bit more. He's got a little white right there. A little white right there on that corner of that ear and that corner of that ear. And right there at the top of his head. Okay. Now, let's talk about what to do with him from here as far as his color. I've done no adjustments to him. The first thing I'm going to do is run Topaz Clarity on him. This will sharpen him up a little bit. Brings It darkens the blacks. It brings out the fur a little bit more. I'm going to click OK. I'm not sure if you can see that on the screen. And this also just is color a little bit in this fur and feathers preset I like to use. It does pump up the colors a little. Definitely gave him that richness I was looking for with him. Still though, his blue is a little bit too blue. And I can also see around the top of his head, maybe I want to do just a little masking to get in there around those uh, pieces of fur at the top of his head and bring the background in there so it doesn't look so cut and paste but okay he's too blue at this point though I'm going to run a preset that I have in Topaz impression on him I use impression one most of the time and I have a preset in here uh, oil preset which is a very very light application of a preset but it gives those warm colors. So that's the oil glaze light that I've made. But see, once again, the blue is too blue. So within the preset, in Topaz Impression, I can go over these colors and see what I have where. And getting over here, it looks blue, but actually there's a lot of this aqua. And there's the blue. Let me work on the blue first and tone it down. Notice how the saturation on the blue is up. I'm going to pull that just on the blue. I'm going to pull that saturation down. So that's before and that's after. It gives him more of a black look. Then I'm going to look at this aqua tone and pull that saturation down as well a little bit. Before, after. Definitely takes the blue tones out and gives him more of the black. But keeps the orange tones nice and rich like I would like for fall. So I'm going to click OK on that and accept that. That toned him down some. What I may do too is adjust his saturation down here from this tab. I don't want to do it too much because I like the orange tones in his fur but I want to pull it down a little. There we go. That's a little better. Now what I might also do at this point would be to bring in another texture on top of this. Or in this case, I could do maybe Topaz Adjust and try a warm filter. Once again, that makes the blues too blue. That one looks nice, but the blues are too blue. So, let's see if I can get to that. Well, let's go back to this one. Let me try this one and see if I like it. Still makes the blues a little bit too blue, but it may work. I like it. Maybe pull the saturation down just a little bit more. This is fully saturated, and this is with it pulled down some. Looks pretty good. 
I can lower his exposure a little bit so he's not so bright because in the scene the light's coming from behind him so I could lower his exposure I could also run topaz lens effects on him and use a reflector light and maybe bring some of the gold tones into him left top let's try from the top and see what happens no I don't like that I actually like him a little on the darker side but I may do something with it after I merge him right now I'm going to zoom in a little closer and check the masking I could probably on the masking bring back a little bit of this ear the tip of it and go back the other way with a small brush and trim it up get that white area out get in here a little tighter yeah it really does look like he's sitting in the leaves and I like that I like the way that looks I think he's super cute however just in case he might look better with one of the other backgrounds I'm going to get on the background layer and I'm going to open up some of the other pathways here here's the green one. Oh, isn't he cute in that one now let's pull out I'm working vertical so I'm only looking at the vertical ones and they always oh, cute in that one too he's cute and everything and then there's this one has some really pretty gold light but with him being a little cooler in color I'm not sure about the, the gold light and then we have this one of course he's too big for that and you don't want to mask the sidewalk over his feet you'd want to have a hard nice hard line there to indicate he's on the sidewalk so that one's not going to work this one I think I love the light but it's a little too golden I can always adjust the color tones up here if I wanted to tone, you know, change those color tones up a little bit. And I can even desaturate that if I wanted to. But that one's not speaking to me with this image. This one I like, this one I like, and this original one I like. So now it's just a matter of which one I want to use with him. This one I think with him being so dark and this being darker he kind of gets lost so we're going to eliminate that one so we're back to the ones that have the lighting behind this green summer spring one and then this one and I could really go with either one of these and I'm just not sure which one since I was really after the autumn look with him <clears throat> I think I'll stick with that one but I really like that one too so this is just a way to show you though that you can open up the different backgrounds if you're working with one and you're not sure about it open up the others and there might be one of the others that works a little better with your subject or if you want to just change up the scene and show the client you may have a client that you're doing this for and you may want to present both an autumn and a summer scene and see how that goes you know which one they prefer if you wanted to pre present two you could save both of these you could go ahead and save this one give it a name up here file save as and give it a name and then you could shut this off and you could give it a name file save as for this one I like both of them so I may do that but here's what I'm going to do I'm going to do what's called from stack which is like merging with the green one turned off 
And this is going to give me a merged image of him in the autumn scene. Now, I'm going to shut that off. I'm going to turn the green one on, and I'm going to do from stack with the green one. Basically, it gives you a merged image to start with. So now I have two images that are merged. I have the green one, and I have the autumn one. And I can save both of them. But I wanted to do show you that you could do a little bit more with these. So I'm going to keep both of these open because I'd like to do the same thing to both images. And I'm going to duplicate the autumn one first because I always duplicate so you don't mess up the first one. And I'm going to go to Topaz Impression again on the merged image this time. And this is a way you can pull your subject in with the background just a little bit more. You can use a very light preset such as what I've set up for oil glaze light is very, very light. It just makes it a little richer and it sort of, if you look closely, it sort of gives it from going from a photograph with a little bit of green in it to a smooth oil painting look. So there's one particular preset. And if I wanted to go a little bit more painterly, I could go with one of my other presets and actually get into more painting. I tend to like this Degas one. And see how it Look at the look at these color tones. They're here and then the dog. And this is before, but now after running this, this particular preset, it gives everything a cohesive color tone. Um, I don't. I think this is a little bit too choppy in the background. I don't like that, so I wouldn't use that one, or at least not just with one click. I might use different layers and different brush sizes to adjust that. I'm just looking through here to see if there's anything that suits me. Um, oil glaze light is one of my favorites. Here's pastel. I like pastel as well. It gives it a soft look. But notice how it takes the color tones for everything and it makes it all look cohesive. I think I'm going to stick with my old standby just for time's sake and not get into a bunch of painting. You see, that adjusts that lighting. Now everything looks perfect. So I'm going to hit OK on that. Now I'm going to do the same with the green. I'm going to duplicate it, pull it on top, and I'm going to run the same preset. It's just a preset I like to run to kind of give it a finished, polished look. But I want to do the same for both styles of the image. So if this were for a client, I could present both of them and see which one they preferred. This is before, this is after. Just kind of ties everything in together. Now another thing I like to do is run Topaz Clarity again. So at this point, I'm going to duplicate this run Topaz Clarity on it. And it just pops, gives him a little bit more pop there. But it also did the background. I don't want the background that way. I just want to give the dog and his foreground a little bit more clarity. But not the background. So I'm going to show you how I fix that. Okay, here it pumped up the clarity on everything. The, the main image below it has no clarity adjustment. So here's what I'm going to do on the top one. I'm going to invert the mask. Now it has no clarity adjustment. But I'm going to brush in the clarity adjustment on the dog and the foreground only. It's just going to pump up his details. And then do the foreground a little bit right in through here and maybe lower the flow. And as I go out, like so. Now, see my little mask right here? 
That's my little dog. This is before the clarity adjustment, and this is after with the clarity adjustment, just on the dog in the foreground. I like that. I'm going to say from stack. Okay, so this is dog one. I'm just renaming it to show that that is a merged layer right there. Now I'm going to shut off all of these. And this is the original one, which I did the impression on already, but I have not done the clarity adjustment. So I'm going to duplicate it, do the clarity adjustment. Fur and feathers, that's what I always use. See how it bumped up that dog in his foreground? But I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to mask it on, invert the mask, and then mask it only onto the, the dog and the foreground. And leave the background nice and soft. All right. So we're going to go to invert. And now I'm going to make the opacity all the way up there. And I'm going to brush it back on the dog in his foreground. And then as I go out on the sides on this foreground, I'm going to reduce that opacity just a little so it's not quite as sharp there. Now here's the little mask I just did for this version. So this is before the clarity adjustment and this is after. Now I'm going to do from stack on that one. Okay, I'm going to move that one to the top, and I'm going to call it Dog 2. All right, so I have Dog 1 and Dog 2. And I can see now if I want to do anything else to this. Let's go to Lens Effects on the uh, green one. Let's see if I might want to put any gold light on him. On the bottom, on the right, on the top. I could also do a graduated neutral density, which on the bottom part would darken the area around the feet a little bit. I actually kind of like the image the way it is. If I wanted to do something else, like give him a fog. See, I could just really play at this point and do any adjustments to the merged image I wanted to. I actually like it the way it is. So I have the autumn one and the green one. So I'm going to save both of these. I'm going to save this guy. Uh, once I find where I'm going and we'll save him as a JPEG. And I'm going to call it Dog 2. It's pretty cool. I ended up with two different images out of this. I didn't plan on that. I was just going to use him with the autumn scene, but I really like the way he looked with the summer one as well. All right, that saved that one. Now I'm going to turn off that layer and I'm going to save this one. Save as. And this is dog one. There's dog two. Dog one. Okay, so now we're just going to get out of this and we're going to open up dog one and two and look at them side by side and see what I ended up with. Now aren't those just super cute? 
So you can present those to your client, like if they wanted to use them for cards or make a big print, they may prefer one or the other depending on their colors in their home or what kind of image they want to portray. Um, you could also, I showed you how you could take this and get more painterly with it in Topaz Impression. When you do that, you, uh, you can really create a whole new look. So the background and everything looks different than it is here. But this gives you a good starting point. You can also add textures on top of this and totally change the look. Um, just for fun, let me um, go with Dog 2. And let's go back to Photo FX Lab. And play with a little bit of impressions. Now I'm going to make duplicate layers here. I'm, I have a preset I'm going to use that I use for my horse art. Uh, I have it in four different, I have four different presets for it saved. One with a really large brush, and a medium brush, and a small brush. Than a tiny brush. And I like to do that when I do these paintings in Topaz Impression like this because you're, you want your details to appear here, so you want to use a tiny brush. But as you get out from the face, you might want to use a little bit larger brush. And then as you get out through here, a larger brush, and then back here, a really large brush, which makes it look like a true painting. So I'm duplicating this four times. My original is down here. So I'm going to shut off everything. This one here is going to be the largest brush setting on this particular preset. All right. Let's find where I have these saved. Horse. Here we go. Horse large. Now see it's got the large brush strokes there, but you can't see the details here. But that's okay because we're going to bring those back with some smaller brush strokes in medium, small, and tiny. But first, on this first layer, we're doing large, which gives you some nice broad sweeping brush strokes. All right. Now we're going to go to the layer above that. Turn that one on. Go back. And we're going to run the horse uh, medium. Here it is. Now you can see it's pulling in the figure of the dog a little bit tighter. Okay, now on this one, next layer up, we're going to do small. I'm going to do a lot of masking here on these layers. All right. Where's the horse? Horse small. All right. And then one more. We're going to do the tiny setting. So I have four settings saved. On, I, I did this preset. I ended up liking it, so what I did was adjusted the brush size only to be real big and real tiny and another one in between. And when I did that, I saved them each as a different name. So we're on tiny. See? So this is tiny. Let me just call it tiny. So I just remember what my layers are, and I go from uh, large to small, usually. Okay, this one's going to be small. If I can get that Y out of there, small. And this one is going to be medium. And this one is large. All right. I'm going to turn all the top ones off, the two top ones off. Okay, there's large, there's medium. Now, turning off the medium, at what point is what I have to decide, do I want to start pulling in my medium strokes? And that would be the dog and the ground. I want the back to remain the large strokes. So here I'm going to invert the mask. Nope, I'm not. I'm going to reset that. 
because that didn't work so well. Well, it would help if I got on the right layer. There's the medium. Now I'm going to invert the mask. That puts a black mask over the whole thing, meaning that what's showing beneath is the large. I'm going to brush back in the medium on the dog layer. I mean on the dog subject. See how it's pulling in some of his details now? Because now it's pulling those medium brush strokes in. There we go. And I'm going to make a bigger brush and just do just a little sweeping motion right there. And maybe even come back in with some large strokes at the very edges. Okay. So that's large. That's medium. Now we're going to go to the small layer. Next one up. Just like we did with the other one, we're going to put a mask over the whole thing by clicking invert. Makes it all black. I'm going to brush back in the small details where I want them which would be on this little guy. Leaving a little looseness around his outside edges. And I actually might want to put some more of that back. So let me go here. Because down here it doesn't need to be quite as detailed. Just his head needs to be detailed. Okay, before, after. See how it brought those details right in here? And on the on his uh, legs and his chest. All right now we're going to go to tiny. We're going to turn that layer on. Now that almost looks like an original photo because it's so tiny. But I'm only going to use this one. I've just hit invert. So we're doing the same thing again. This one I'm only going to use on his eyes. Probably. I'm blowing this up so I can see. I like the way his nose and mouth looks, but his eyes still need a little detail. So, once again, after inverting it, I'm going to brush the detail of this tiny layer just in around the eyes. Like so. And maybe just a little bit on the sides of the nose and the corners of the mouth, maybe right there. See, it's got a very, very little mask. So that's before. That's after. Maybe even right here, because I know there's a little line right there. There we go. Before. There's before. See how his details still aren't there, but now we've brushed them back in using that tiny layer. So now I'm going to go out and take a look and do from stack. And we can compare. All right, this is the painted in painted image. Okay, I'm going to move the photo back to the top. So there's what we started with, and there's the painted one. And I could also adjust and put what we started with on top, and you know, do an opacity adjustment and kind of do like that. I could make a mask and bring back some more of the details. But I wanted to go painterly, so that's what I did here. Put this one on top, painterly. Now, I do like this painterly version. I don't like the way these brush strokes look. So at this point, I could duplicate this, run another impression preset that maybe had some larger brush strokes that were maybe sweeping in a different direction or I could take it into Corel Painter the merged image and actually do some painting over here um, choosing colors from this image to actually lay down some new strokes let me just try another topaz preset on here now I'm thinking only of the background with this not the dog and the foreground I like the way this looks but this right here I'm bothered by and so I'm just looking through the different presets that's before that's after that one has a little bit more of a fuzzy look 
Let me raise that brush size up. Before, after. I kind of like that. I could use some of that. I just like the strokes in it. The hue is pretty, pretty similar. So that's one possibility if I wanted to fiddle with those brush strokes. Let's look at this one. Now this is uh, one I set up called Dreamy Distance, and then I have Dreamy. That's Dreamy. It tones down the, the brush strokes of those, and then Dreamy Distance. Dreamy Distance keeps more of the original color. Click OK on that. And once again, invert the mask, because I only like to paint it in where I want it. So let me just try. See how that's... When I paint that in, it's just softening those strokes a little bit. Because that is in the background. And you want it to be a little softer. But it's keeping the colors the same. Before, after. And if I didn't like that totally, I could just maybe move the opacity slider. Just tones down those strokes a little bit. Before, after. I kind of like that one. Maybe put the opacity up all the way and take a look at that again. So you can just slide it around and see what you like. I do like seeing some of the brush strokes, just not quite as strong. So by using this preset, it tones it down just a little. Fix my mask there. You can see my mask is just around the top and the back behind the dog. Before, after. That's pretty good. So I might go with something like this. Or like I said, I might take it into Corel Painter and even do some totally different brush strokes here. But that is something you can do with your finished image. Which was right here. Um, if you didn't want it to look so photographic, you could take it into Topaz Impression and go with something like this. Anyway, I'm not going to do that with this one. I like the little guy as he is, and I like him this way too. But that's just an example video on how you can do different things with these backgrounds, not just with your animal subjects, but with people subjects too. They're very smooth and creamy. And hence the name Dreamy Creamy. They're kind of dreamy looking. Uh, they would work good with people as well as animals. And they can also work as a just a soft background, maybe faded in behind your subject if you didn't want to go full strength like this. Like on that particular background layer, you could uh, lower the opacity on it and really make it fade. And just to give a hint and even use some textures behind the subject. So there's a lot of different things you can do with these and I hope you enjoy using them. Thanks for watching. You all have a great day.